Zoe Daniel reporting there from Thailand. Let's go to Canberra now, where ABC News 24's political editor Lyndall Curtis is speaking to the opposition transport spokesman Anthony Albanese. Anthony Albanese, welcome to ABC News 24. Given the, Great to be with you, Lyndall. Uh, given the Treasurer apparently has some views about what to do about Qantas, could I get your view on whether it's important in this day and age to have Qantas as a national carrier? Well, firstly, of course, uh, the Qantas Sale Act provides for uh, majority Australian ownership, 51%. Uh, Labor supports uh, that as a policy. It's important also that people understand that that is very much in Australia's national interest. The way that air services agreements work internationally is there are agreements between respective countries based upon uh, national carriers. So it's a global industry, but there are agreements between nations about the ability uh, for respective carriers uh, represented by those nations to fly. So, so, so if, would if be Qantas was a majority foreign owned, would those agreements not be able to happen? Well, that would uh, create a whole series of issues regarding the ability of uh, Qantas uh, to access uh, arrangements such as the United States, of course, Pete would be familiar with, uh, whereby there's limited access, uh, an agreement between uh, our two nations that allows for uh, two airlines uh, from uh, each country uh, to fly uh, from uh, Australia to the United States and vice versa. So it's uh, not as simple as getting rid of the, uh, the Australian ownership of Qantas. And what's more, I think, Lyndall, if uh, Qantas uh, ceased to be an Australian majority owned airline, uh, that would be getting rid of an iconic uh, Australian company and would have, I think, uh, real implications. Part of Qantas's benefit for the national economy is uh, far beyond just that of some other company. Uh, Qantas plays a vital role uh, when uh, Australians need it too. For example, when there were issues in Thailand, uh, Qantas made sure that people could be uh, evacuated uh, from Thailand. Uh, whenever national governments have needed assistance, Qantas has been there uh, to help as uh, an iconic Australian national airline. Qu and Qantas I think also, that is pretty important. Qantas also, though, has responsibilities to its shareholders. It has to try and be a profitable company. Do you accept that, that Qantas is facing a struggle, does not have a level playing field, and in particular is facing competition from Virgin Airlines, which is uh, expecting a $350 million capital raising from its, its owners, which in themselves are state-owned airlines? Well, certainly there, is, um, there are issues, uh, Lyndall, and uh, we're prepared to work constructively with the government, and I've indicated that uh, to uh, Joe Hockey uh, as the Treasurer and Warren Truss as the Transport Minister. So what, uh, what are the view, options? Well, there are options which go to uh, making it clear to the markets that uh, any Australian government would not sit back idly and allow uh, Qantas to just, uh, to just disappear, to fall over. That that would be a real issue. We saw when uh, Qantas grounded its fleet in uh, recent times, we saw what the implications were of that uh, for our national economy. So any government wouldn't just sit back. So there are a range of options uh, going from, I certainly provided as Transport Minister uh, prior to uh, the election being called uh, in August, uh, some uh, written documentation about what the government's views were uh, of Qantas that was worked through with Treasury and Finance. There are other options there, such as perhaps a, a small uh, equity uh, take-up. Uh, does, does that effectively a, mean, though, the, gov government the government entity? getting back into the airline business? Well, it may well be that it is a, a, an option that uh, could be considered is one of a, a small uh, equity uh, uptake, uh, so as to make it clear, essentially, to the markets, provide that signal that uh, the uh, Australian government regarded uh, Qantas as not just any other company, uh, that there are real national security and national interest 
issues uh, regarding making sure that we have a, a national airline uh, such as Qantas continue to be successful. Uh, we have a, a very successful aviation industry. We're very lucky that we have two well-run companies in Qantas and Virgin. Uh, Virgin, of course, uh, we have a, a system whereby domestically uh, we do have that foreign investment into our domestic airlines, which is why uh, Virgin are uh, able to uh, have uh, that, uh, that foreign investment into their domestic operation, just as airlines such as Rex, which is owned uh, from Singapore. Uh, that's ensured that there's good competition here. But uh, when it comes to our, our international airlines, uh, then uh, it, is, it is important that uh, the government uh, act and, and act constructively. Uh, we're prepared to work with uh, both uh, Qantas and, and Virgin, as we were in government, to ensure good outcomes in the national interest. But, but you wouldn't countenance a change to the Sale Act to allow majority foreign ownership of Qantas? No, we think that uh, once you... The whole point here is that Australia needs a, a, a national airline that is uh, majority Australian owned, and that the policy implications behind walking away from that uh, are much greater than uh, people uh, outside the industry might think. It's what? not simply a matter of uh, ownership not mattering. Ownership matters for air services agreements. Ownership is the foundation stone of uh, the global aviation industry. One, one final question, because I understand you're about to go and give a speech about rail. You push the concept of high-speed rail in Australia, a high-speed rail service, particularly between Sydney and Melbourne. Is that now off the agenda? Well, it's, uh, it's a pity that uh, the incoming government has gotten rid of the major cities unit. They've gotten rid of uh, the high-speed rail advisory group. It was hardly a, uh, a, a labour-biased group. It included people like Tim Fisher, uh, people like Jennifer Westacott from the Business Council of Australia. What they recommended was that we plan for the high-speed rail route between Brisbane and Melbourne, that we preserve the corridor. That is still my view. Uh, we'll be pursuing that uh, from opposition through in the form of uh, a private member's bill uh, to make sure that we we plan for the future. And uh, it is a pity that uh, the incoming government have such a negative attitude towards rail. Uh, they've walked away and said they won't fund any urban rail project. And that means uh, that projects which are vital to the growth of cities like the Cross River Rail Project in Brisbane, the Melbourne Metro Project, uh, won't go ahead with federal funding. I think that's very short-sighted. And uh, if we're serious about infrastructure development, we've got to have proper uh, analysis and provide that funding based upon what the best project is, rather than just say, we'll fund roads but not rail. Anthony Albanese, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time.